You can inject Azure API management into virtual network and configure it to be internal mode, which makes it accessible only within the virtual network. When this virtual network is connected to on-premise via express route or site-to-site -site VPN, it can even reach your on-premise applications. Application Gateway is another Azure Pass resource that acts as Layer 7 load balancer and it comes with web application firewall capabilities. Integrating these two will give an excellent outcome for many business use cases. In this video, we will see what are those business use cases and how we can integrate these two with a step-by-step -step process. Hi, this is Shri. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Let's get started with it. The first step is to configure Azure API management in internal mode. I have already made another video on how to configure Azure API management internal mode with a step-by-step -step process. I will leave the link in the description below. You can get it from there. I have already created Azure API management and configured it in internal mode. We'll quickly go over these resources. The best way to get started with this one is from virtual network. If we go to diagram, I have created SG-VNet virtual network and I have created three subnets. One is a default subnet, subnet APIM, subnet application gateway. In the default subnet, I have deployed two virtual machines. One is app client, another one is app server. App server is where I have deployed our APIs and app client is where we will be accessing those APIs from. In a way, this app server kind of mimics your on-premises application, web application or APIs, whatever. And app client is a client who is accessing those applications. And I have deployed Azure API management inside the subnet iPhone APIM. Let's quickly look at these two virtual machines. Let's connect to app server. This is my app server. Here I have deployed two APIs. Let's open iNet manager. I have deployed two APIs here. One is external API, which is on 8080 port, and another one is the default website. Let's quickly browse this. One is on localhost, another one is on localhost 8080 port. I have the APIs deployed here, slash values. So this is just to demonstrate, 8080 will be our external app. This one will be our internal one, API, slash values. IT port internal app. We can access these two from our app client as well. I will quickly demonstrate that as well. This is our app client machine. And if you see our app server IP address, they both deployed on the same VNet. If you see our app server IP address is private IP address is 10.0.0.4. We can access with the private IP address. And we can also access with the private DNS name. If I go to our resource group, I have created a private DNS zone and I have mapped app server to 10.0.0.4 and app client to 10.0.0.5. What does that mean is from app client, I can access API values that is internal and if I do, that will be external. Now, these two APIs were managed by our Azure API management instance. I have created this one already. This is our API instance. First, let's look at the APIs that I have configured. So I have configured one internal API, one external API. Let's look at the internal API, which is I have only one get operation and the backend is directly app values, which is directly reaching on IT port, the default port, whereas external API, I have the values, which is on IT IT port. If I go to the network, it is configured in internal mode and it is deployed in SG-VNet virtual network and subnet-APIM subnet. If I go back to our APIM resource, when we configure Azure API management in internal mode, you can't access it with the port number. It needs to have a fully qualified domain name. That is the reason why we have created private DNS resource, which is shri.com. I have already created those custom domains here. If you go to custom domains, so here our gateway is mapped to APIM shri.com and developer portal is mapped to APIM iPhone dev iPhone portal shri.com and if I go to shri.com private DNS zone, I have mapped the record appropriately. For instance, APIM 
look at this one so apimshri.com is mapped to the private ip address 10.0.1.5 of apim if i go to the apim so 10.0.1.5 is a private ip address of apim which is mapped to apim.shri.com in azure private dns system now we can access using the apim url directly uh, i can demo that one as well if i go here apim.shri.com same internal which is the external API. so that's all set up we have the internal apim configured properly which is working well and good now now we call it here internal api external api there is a reason for it right here at the moment these two are internal apis they can't be reached over the internet if you go here if you simply hit api shri.com or the developer portal it can't be reached over the internet because as soon as you turn down the internal mode it loses public connectivity so it can't be accessed over the internet so these are in a way internal apis but there is a reason why i have why we have named it as internal api and external api here let's say for instance if you want to expose a subnet of these internal apis to external consumers and we want to do this using a single front end for both internal and external consumers and we want web application firewall to protect these apis application gateway does exactly this it is a layer 7 load balancer and comes with web application firewall if you are looking to understand more about application gateway i have made another video i will leave the link in the description below you can get it from there so by deploying application gateway in front of internal api management we can use single api management instance for internal and external consumers and make it act as a single front door for both on premise and cloud apis Technically, these two APIs are internal APIs. Now, what we will do is we will deploy application gateway in front of this API management instance and we will make these two APIs accessible only over application gateway. But this external API will be accessible over the internet even though it's an internal API. And this internal API will be accessible only within the on-premises network. But both of these requests will go over application gateway meaning that they would have to go over web application firewall which is the additional security that's what we want let's deploy application gateway in front of azure api management instance go to our resource group just click on create give a name to application gateway we don't need auto scaling for this demo purpose and the instant count one should be okay two is disable for now and virtual network it has to be deployed in a virtual network. It will be SGI and VNet, the same virtual network, but we will be deploying it in a separate subnet which we created specially for App Gateway. We will be deploying it there. Next, front ends. For our case, we have both front ends, public and private. So for public IP address, we need a uh, IP address created. I have already created App Gateway iPhone IP. Let's select that one. And for private IP address, it's a specific private address. That will be 10.0.2.10 if you remember address space 10.0.2 is the address space for the subnet i have selected simply you know a number 10 which will be the internal ip address for this application gateway next backends we just have to add a backend pool in our case the backend pool will be apim backend pool so our apim fully qualified domain name will be apim.re.com and add on configuration now we have two front ends let's click on and we have a backend pool we just have to connect the front end to the backend pool using the routing rule the rule for now is external rule because this will go to external and listener name is external listener and the front end ip address is public and it will listen to the request on 880 port and the protocol is you can do HTTPS, but I'm just don't want to deal with the certificates now. So we will do simply HTTP. So the listener will listen to the incoming request on port 8080 with the protocol HTTP. The backend target is in our case APM backend pool and we have to create a backend HTTP setting. Let's name it as a HTTP setting. In our case, backend pool is HTTPS. So here for now, just I don't have the certificate handy for now, select ca certificate which is wrong we will correct this later and by default host name 
we have to override the host name for api management and app service here and we have to pick the host name from the backend target we don't need a custom pro for this click on add so we have everything in place add okay we just configured routing rule for front end which will route which will be routed to apim click on next we will configure a listener for private ip address later for now just click on next we don't want any tags now click on next validation passed everything looks good just create it we have the resource ready let's go to the resource now we are in app gateway instance if you see here the backend pools are unhealthy the reason for that is if you go to backend setting http setting here we said it's a well-known ca certificate but that's wrong we lied it should be no and we have to upload a new certificate here new signing certificate i have created an ssl certificate and signing certificate for apim.shri.com for when configuring the custom domain here we have to select that signing certificate so this is my shri.signing.root certificate just select that one and name it as shri.com and add certificate and click on save it is saved successfully now it's currently updating the app gateway yep the changes have been successfully applied now if you go and check the backend health so we have one external listener configured this listener will listen on this is a public listener which means that it will listen over public ip address of application gateway and it will listen to the request on the port eitit and we have a rule that rule will route the request to the backend target which is apim backend we have everything in place let's test this now let's go here take the public ip address of app gateway now take the public ip address of the app gateway and hit the external api values via port 8080 there you go we have the external api port 8080 hit successfully from the external world which is reaching to on-premises now let's see how we can configure for internal api go back to application gateway we already have configured the external listener now we need a listener for private listener let's name it as a private now we need a listener for internal api so let's name it as an internal listener and here the front end ip is a private ip address and i don't want to go fancy and do https http should be okay now and it will be on the port eit listener type is basic and there is no error page we can go simple and click on add we have the listener created now we have a listener which is listening to the request coming on a private ip address with the port eit but we need a rule to route the request from private ip port eit to appropriate backend let's configure that rule so private ip address there is no associated rule to configure that go to the rules click on routing rule okay rule name is internal rule priority is 101 and the listener is internal listener and the backend target is same backend and the backend setting is same setting click on add it's updating the settings now okay we have the rules configured successfully now we have everything in place as we configured if you go to the listener now the internal listener will listen to the request on private ip address on the port 8 okay let's reach our internal api via the private ip address of application gateway let's go to the application gateway overview and grab the private ip address which is 10.0.2.10 just copy that and go to our app client machine the internal virtual network which will mimic as on-premises system as we did not configure https it will be simply http 10.0.2.10 so yep no other path it's a direct url now let's see the internal api via application gateway successfully it is reaching the internal app this is how we expose the subset of our internal apis to the external world and we will use the same front end even to access the internal apis so all the requests are now going over application gateway we haven't configured web application firewall because this is not available in standard v2 we have to migrate it to web application firewall v2 but this is just for the demonstration purpose i haven't really turned on waf v2 but if you can turn on the waf v2 both 
external consumers and the internal consumers they both have to go th go through a single front end which is application gateway and they both have to go to the web application firewall that demonstrate the integration of application gateway with azure api management internal mode i hope you like the demo if you like the video please like share and subscribe to my youtube channel that's it for this video i will catch you in the next video until then this is shri signing off thank you